If you live long enough, there's an excellent chance you're going to end up with creaky knees. Also, creaky shoulders, creaky hips, creaky ankles, and a creaky back. So common is degenerative joint disease in the aging population that joint supplements are a huge industry. The supplement industry is a difficult one to measure, but according to a recent report by the National Business Journal, the market for joint supplements is in excess of $1.5 billion. But do they work? Hi, I'm Jonathan Sullivan, and welcome back to Graysteel. We're still taking a break from some of our more didactic material. This episode is a preview of things to come on the Graysteel channel. It's still nerdy, perhaps, but a bit more practical. Today, we're going to talk about joint supplements. First, we have to understand what we're dealing with. Arthritis isn't just one disease. Arthritis is any disease or process that affects the joints, and there are over 100 of these arthritides, from septic arthritis to traumatic arthritis to the very tragic and destructive autoimmune arthritides, like rheumatoid, psoriatic, and lupus arthritis. There are also the crystal arthropathies, like gout and pseudogout. We'll save all of those for future episodes. The kind of arthritis targeted by most commercially available joint supplements is osteoarthritis, which is a degenerative disease of the joints. You can think of it as a wear and tear arthritis, in which the cartilage inside the joints is worn down and eroded by use, time, aging, and stress. Cartilage comes in many forms, but we're talking about articular cartilage, which is the kind of cartilage that you find at the end of the drumstick. It's also called hyaline cartilage, and it contains both living and non-living elements. The living elements are the cartilage cells, or chondrocytes. These chondrocytes produce and are embedded within a cartilage matrix, which constitutes the bulk of the cartilage tissue and gives it its springy, tough, shock-absorbing qualities. This cartilage matrix contains two principal elements. The first is collagen, specifically type 2 collagen, a tough, fibrous protein that gives cartilage a lot of its elasticity and toughness. The other component is chondroitin sulfate, which is a polymer, a chain of two simple alternating sugars, N-acetylgalactosamine and glucuronic acid. The first of these sugars is a nitrogen-containing sugar, and that's going to be important, so keep it in mind. Chondroitin sulfate has a lot of negative charge because of all the tightly packed sulfate groups, and these negative charges repel each other due to electrostatic forces. This property is what gives cartilage matrix a lot of its springiness and resistance to compression. Now, in osteoarthritis, it's all about wear and tear due to the march of the years, joint misuse and overuse, obesity, and trauma. All of this wear and tear leads to the breakdown and loss of cartilage matrix and the disorganization of collagen fibers. The amount of water in the cartilage matrix increases, and the tissue becomes less resilient, leading to still more wear and tear. The chondrocytes can't or won't keep up. Collagen is a notoriously atrophic tissue, meaning it's replaced only very slowly or not at all, especially as we get older. Lazy chondrocytes? What do they think we're paying them for? The long-term result of this process is thinning of cartilage that cushions our joints, narrowing of the joint space, unhealthy changes to the underlying bone, stiffness, and pain. The end game is bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, which leads to severe disability and can generally only be treated by replacing the joint. One more reason you should be glad you live in the 21st century and not the 11th. The joint supplements that you buy at Walgreens do nothing to get our chondrocytes back in the game, and they can do little, if anything, to affect the increasing disorganization of collagen fibers in the degenerating cartilage. So, what do they do? Well, the most common joint supplements that are commercially available are chondroitin sulfate and glucosamine, and quite commonly, combinations of these two together. Chondroitin sulfate is that two-sugar polymer that we just talked about, and clearly, the rationale here is that since we're losing this sugar from our joint cartilage, if we just eat some more of this stuff, it will just somehow magically find its way back into our joints and make us all supple and live again. If that sounds a bit like magical thinking to you, then you're probably still paying attention. But you never know with living systems. 
Some people think these supplements have intrinsic anti-inflammatory and signaling properties that help prevent the loss of cartilage rather than serving as mere building blocks for the replacement of cartilage matrix. And there's a bit of lab evidence to support that. We'll take a look at the clinical, real-world evidence in just a minute. Glucosamine, unlike chondroitin, is not part of our cartilage matrix. It is, however, the biochemical precursor to all nitrogen-containing sugars, like the N-acetylgalactosamine in those chondroitin sulfate chains, which are part of the matrix. So the rationale here is that if we eat more glucosamine, it'll be easier for us and our chondrocytes to replace the chondroitin sulfate in our cartilage matrix. Okay, so that's the idea, but living systems have their own ideas, and it remains to be seen if this stuff actually works. Unfortunately, the science on this is very mixed and not of the greatest quality. And in fact, some of it's not even of the greatest integrity. This, unfortunately, is often the case when there's money to be made. That all being said, when we look at the science, here, on balance, is what we find. First of all, these supplements appear to be pretty safe. Some minor side effects have been reported, stomach upset, and of all things, joint pain, which would seem to be not the point. But for the most part, these supplements are well tolerated. They vary in quality, and supplements are not regulated in the United States. So, caveat emptor. When it comes to benefit, the data is all over the place, but we can sum it up this way. Joint supplements may help, or they may not. But even if they do help, they don't help much and they don't help everybody. Consider, for example, a meta-analysis of chondroitin published by Reichenbach et al. in 2007. A meta-analysis is a study of studies, a way to very systematically and methodically combine a bunch of smaller studies into a large study. Reichenbach et al. found 20 trials suitable for their meta-analysis and a lot of variability between them. They found that studies showing a positive effect of chondroitin tended to be smaller, with unclear or less rigorous randomization or sample allocations, and tended not to be conducted according to an intention-to-treat analysis, which is more appropriate to how patients are actually treated in the real world. In other words, studies showing a benefit of chondroitin tended to be of lower quality. When the authors restricted their analysis to studies with large samples and intention-to-treat models, they found only three studies, and when they pooled these studies, they found that the symptomatic benefit of chondroitin is minimal or non-existent. Ouch! On the other hand, consider the recent Cochrane review on the effect of chondroitin. Cochrane is a non-profit multinational NGO with thousands of volunteer academics that conducts meta-analyses and systematic reviews on a broad range of topics. In the 2015 Cochrane Systematic Review on Joint Supplements by Singh et al., 43 studies were analyzed, some of which were funded by manufacturers. Always a red flag. They found small benefits of chondroitin on pain and joint space narrowing of debatable clinical significance. Another Cochrane Review by Tauhid et al. in 2009 focused on glucosamine. 25 studies with a total of almost 5,000 patients were analyzed, and the authors concluded that Based on this data, patients with arthritis might see a minor improvement in pain and physical function, although the effect sizes were small and the findings were very inconsistent. Or consider the 2006 study by Clegg et al. in the New England Journal of Medicine, which randomized 1,583 subjects to receive either glucosamine, chondroitin, glucosamine and chondroitin in combination, celecoxib, an anti-inflammatory pain reliever, or placebo. The authors found that neither glucosamine nor chondroitin nor the combination reduced pain effectively in patients with arthritis of the knee, although some post hoc statistical ledger domain showed that a subgroup of patients with severe pain might have derived a small benefit. The literature is similarly mixed on the issue of joint space narrowing and disease progression, which is a real bummer because it suggests that the impact of these joint supplements on cartilage retention is minimal if it exists at all. When we put all of this data together, we get a pretty clear picture of, well, actually, we don't get a very clear picture. Commercially available joint supplements may help a very little bit with arthritis, or they may not.
their biggest benefit seems to be reserved for that very small segment of the population who manufacture and market joint supplements. For them, the benefit is enormous, but unless you're one of those guys, it's really hard to make a strong recommendation that you take this stuff. So before you ask, I'll be honest. I take a glucosamine chondroitin preparation. The data tells me that these supplements are safe and I tolerate them just fine. I'm 56 freaking years old. I'm pretty active and I work my joints pretty hard. They're starting to get a little creaky. If there's even a small chance that glucosamine and chondroitin will help me hang on to a little bit of my cartilage tissue, then I'll take that chance. But I'm not kidding myself. Based on the data, I know that any benefit I'm getting is small, and I'm quite probably not getting any benefit at all. When it comes to your joints, you need to weigh the data, the risks, benefits, and costs for yourself and come to your own conclusions, because the data just doesn't give us any clear answers. There is another kind of medicine that you can take for your osteoarthritis, however, and you may have already guessed what it is. That's right. I'm talking about exercise medicine. On balance, the preponderance of the data shows that exercise does not worsen osteoarthritis, and second, that it generally improves both pain and function. The effect of exercise on disease progression, that is, the loss of cartilage, remains murky, however. So even though there are some physiological rationale to support a cartilage-enhancing effect of exercise, we just don't have the clear data to support it. Stay tuned. But when it comes to joint medicines, exercise is clearly the biggest bang for your buck. It improves pain and function in addition to all the other metabolic, cardiovascular, musculoskeletal, and fitness benefits of exercise, and it doesn't cost you 40 bucks for a 30-day supply. If you have osteoarthritis and you're not engaged in an exercise program, you're really missing the boat. After all, your joints can be old and creaky and weak, or old and creaky and strong. Which will it be? Thanks for watching this episode of Graysteel. Our content is offered for educational and infotainment purposes only and will never be offered as medical advice for any particular person, patient, disease, or condition. When it comes to your health, you should work closely with your physician. I want to thank my colleagues who gave me some excellent advice and feedback on this episode. C.J. Gocher is a starting strength coach at Ironmonger's Gym and CrossFit 760 in Vista, California. Dr. Austin Baraki is a starting strength coach and a physician who's hella strong and hella smart. If you're interested in learning more about osteoarthritis and joint supplements, Austin has an article coming out on this topic in February of 2017. You can find this article and lots more great information about strength and fitness and health at the Starting Strength website. As usual, Links are in the doobly-doo. A special shout out to our newest power patrons, John and Val, David, Chris Ash, and Mike, and to all of our patrons on Patreon who help keep this channel going. If you'd like to help us make more of these videos, go to patreon.com slash graysteel. Or if you just want to learn more about healthy aging, make sure you go to youtube.com slash graysteel and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Stay strong and stay healthy.